So what's going on, people? Um, there's been another shooting, tragedy. There are a lot of people suffering because of it. Um, but it's really interesting, well, not interesting, yeah, but the way we respond to such tragedies is, is, is a tragedy in itself. Because we live in a world where, you know, we build dividing walls. You could say by race, by culture, uh, by class, whatever. We build dividing walls, religion. And when we build dividing walls, we start hating on each other. And we could see that hate as soon as any kind of tragedy happens. So when there's a heat wave, somebody will say, oh, it's because of fossil fuel. It's because of evil companies, and we start hating on them. And if you deny uh, climate change, then they hate you for that. We have created a dividing wall. Uh, politics, there's a dividing wall. As soon as the tragedies happen, the shooting happen, a politician comes out and blames our president and calls him a racist. And, and then there's other group that, that, that hates on the illegal aliens that live in America to, for taking away the resources that we have, or limited resources that we have, the finances that we have in this country. And we keep building walls that will just bring nothing but hatred to one, uh, to one another. And we could see that hatred building, and some people believe that it's going to get worse. So in a way, when the election comes next year, um, depending on who wins, if Trump wins again, I think it's going to get a whole lot worse, unless something happens. You see, for some reason, in this life, as, as the Bible, Jesus himself said, in this life, we're going we're gonna to have tribulations. We're all going to have sufferings. And when we go through that sufferings, even though we live in the best of all times in the history of this world, the things that we have, the telephones, cars, airplanes, and things like that, majority of the world that lived on earth didn't have that. Um, we live in the best of all times. But we complain more for some reason. Why is that? Maybe it's because of a belief system that somehow we've been brainwashed by one thing or another. Who knows? But let's look at the, the solutions. How are we going to fix this? Well, the politician says, I know what we could do. We're going to give uh, reparations, $300 billion or something like that. We're going to give free health care to everybody. We're going to cancel your... Uh, what is it, your, your, your education debt? Uh, we're gonna give you $1,000 a month. I like that one the best. <laughs> Cause I don't have uh, ed debt uh, when it comes to my college, uh, tuition debts. But $1,000 a month to everybody. Now I'm just waiting for somebody who is bold enough, a politician to come out and said, I'm willing to forgive mortgage debts. <laughs> that I will vote for. But you know it's not going to happen. Promises are promises. But when it doesn't happen, they're going to blame other people for it. And then we're all going to start hating on each other because uh, what was promised to us is not going to come. So human uh, solution, human solution is through law. Politicians are going to create all these new rules and regulations. But imagine, because right, there are calls for getting rid of guns. All right? Let's make a law that's gonna get, that, that would... Um, make having handguns illegal. I'm gonna, I know they're going to start with assault rifle, but you know, any handgun could be an assault rifle. Uh, hang, so let's say we're going to get rid of all guns. Now, what if people decide not to? Then they become criminals overnight. They're going to become criminals. Then what are we going to have to do? Well, we have to bring punishment, right? So it's, we're just going to create a lot more criminals, and you think they're going to give up their guns so easily? No, it's, there's going to be a lot more hatred that's going to build up. Maybe things has to get so bad before it gets better. You know? But politicians, are, our human way of fixing things is to make new rules, more rules, more laws, which only creates more criminals. Now, another way man does it is through a religion. That's right, I said man-made religion. Right? And there is the faith, of course, but a lot of the stuff, there's religion that is man-made. So what the religion solution is, we're a bunch of no good people. Right? And that if you just to believe in one thing, then, then you're going to have eternal life and you're going to get better and all that kind of stuff. But if you don't, 
then you're going to just burn in hell forever, which once again builds dividing walls. It was just like the Jews and the Gentiles. There's believers and non-believers. There's a dividing wall. Now, Jesus came to take down that dividing wall, but it seems like a lot of times there's, there's so many different religions too, and they disagree on so many things, and they just build dividing walls. Then religion, in some places, religion and politics come together, they join hands, and they create laws that somehow doesn't work. Because if you remember, Jesus Christ was crucified. He's an innocent man, right? He's an innocent man. Innocent man was crucified, was murdered. For what? By breaking the law. Man-made law and religious laws. That was it. Even though he was innocent of it, they kept on pushing for it. Right? So he was crucified. So what crucified Jesus is the law, human law, man-made law. Right? But what the Bible talks about is that death was not the end. And this is where I think we as humans, as we look at all the, the crap in this life, all the tribulations and sufferings in life, because there are a lot of them. In fact, Jesus said, in this life, we're going to have tribulations. But what did he say? But, right, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Now, how are we going to overcome all the sufferings and tribulations of this world is to, what? He says, Bible says, to believe in the resurrection. For Christ, right, has given us a, a, a resurrected life of, of living a new life, giving us a living hope. That is a new life with him is different than the old ways of law. Get rid of the law so that we could live through another, the spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ. The resurrected power of Jesus Christ now dwells in those of, uh, in us. If we were to have faith to have fellowship with him, we would abide in that spirit. And the Spirit gives us peace, gives us great joy, as Peter says, right? Um, joy unspeakable, actually, he says. Uh, peace, uh, what is it? Faith, hope, glory. These are all good words. Look at the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, goodness, kindness, something, something, self-control. <laughs> right? I mean, these are all positive things that we need to live by. So when Martin Luther King and other people comes out and say, we dream that we don't, we're no longer identified by our differences, our skin color, our culture, our, our um, class. Right? But we would judge one another by the content of the character. Love, joy, peace, goodness, kindness. Right? So that we could go through the sufferings. Because right? they will be true. We could go through the sufferings and rejoice in them. Rejoice through our sufferings rather than complaining and blaming and creating more hate. Right? That's the promise of the Holy Spirit. That's the way of, of Jesus Christ. And he said, this is the way, the truth, and the life. I hope and pray in this time when there are a lot of tragedies and a lot of people are suffering, obviously, and people are getting upset and blame game has already started. Which is kind of sad. But let us hold on to the hope that the resurrected power of Jesus Christ will come and give us peace, joy, goodness. So that we could, we could go through the sufferings and not make mistakes. And, and not do things that would br bring more hatred into this world. So I know sometimes marriage could get difficult. I know raising kids can be difficult. It could bring a lot of sufferings. I know not having a lot of, trust me on this one, not having enough money to pay for your payments, it is, there is suffering. But don't place your hope on a man who promises but does not deliver. Hold on to the promise of Jesus who has already delivered, given us love and the power of the Spirit so we could hang on, rejoice through our tough times, knowing that all things will work out for good. Right? And people can say, well, I don't have that kind of faith. But the faith, if you don't have faith in Christ and, and his promises, what other things can you really hold on to? Man's promises, which never will come through. It only creates hate. 
So in a way, we don't really have much of a choice but to believe. That's what I think. Anyways, so as we go through the struggles and the sufferings of life, I hope and pray that uh, we will hold on to the promises of the Lord Jesus Christ and the power of love that he has given to us so we could go through the sufferings with, with joy unspeakable rather than creating hatred and dividing walls that could only create a lot more hatred. Some people are predicting that if, if um, whatever the result's going to be in next year's election, half of America is going to be upset and people are going to be uh, responding to it in not such a positive and good way. So do not place your hope on another man and man's promises. Right? All the promises that the presidential candidates are, are giving right now, all the ones that, that somehow sound nice, look back into history and see how many promises were there that were not kept. Man cannot keep promises. Because I don't know, sometimes I really feel that the people who are supposed to represent us really don't know what we need, either that or they don't really care. Right? As Michael Jackson said, all I got to say is that they don't really care about us. <laughs> right? I really love that song, by the way. Maybe because I agree with them. But there is a, a promise that God has made who gave up his son to die on the cross. He died by the law so that we could resurrect to grace, to peace, love, and joy. Let us abide by that so that maybe we could start getting along with our neighbors because we have accepted love within ourselves. That is the message of the gospel. I pray the gospel will come alive in you. Man, it's tough out there. It's just getting worse. Let's change that around. Let's change that. And the only thing that we have control over to change is ourselves. One by one, let us do that today. God bless you. Believe in Jesus Christ. All right, I'll see you next time.